to friends and family to today's edition of the Wellness Homesteader. So this morning you find me outside by some very beautiful sunflowers, but I did receive a request. So this is for you, Victoria, one of my faithful subscribers, about seed saving and particularly seed saving tomatoes. But I thought, you know, I'm gonna kind of encompass a few other things and you all may know how to do this. But tomatoes can be a little tricky. Sunflowers can be a little tricky, believe it or not. And I have such beautiful flowers in my garden this year. I thought, why not seed save? So when you look at a sunflower, you might think this is the flower. But in fact, all of these little center um, stick outs <laughs> are individual flowers. So that may be something you didn't know. So I'm gonna show you one here that is finished. And let's see if I can get you a little closer, y'all. Yeah, there we go. So when you scrape away these individual seeds, which will happen naturally, uh, little flowers, pardon me, this is where the seed is on a sunflower. So for optimum growing, and y'all, I've, these are new to me this year let me let me say that but i seed save every year from my sunflowers and i always try to save the prime specimen and i'm going to take you into the house and show you some that i've already saved but just looking here now yeah, this one's pretty far gone i didn't quite get to it soon enough so we're just letting it naturally we're going to let it naturally seed so let me let me pull that off and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So this particular specimen has seeds like this. So a little bit different, but if I just scatter those, I will have all sorts of volunteer sunflowers. So that's what I'm gonna do with that one. The ones that actually mature fully into a hard seed, I have those indoors. Now on a Zenia. Let me see if I can find. <laughs> I don't know why. Okay, here we go. So these, I will fully admit, while while pretty, have not been my favorite, but they do look pretty in the garden. So this is a spent Zenia, and all of these little spikes are seeds. So one Zenia bloom can produce a ton, a ton of seeds for you for the next year. So as you all know, I had a very prolific garden this year and I want to change it up for next year a little bit. So what I'm thinking of y'all is I have two more of the long four foot by eight foot beds, which most logically would go on the other end because my compost bin, didn't, bin is here. I need fencing all the way around my garden that is gonna protect it from the hens. They they don't know better guys and so they get into things and then they get <laughs> grounded and they know. Um, they're terrified of the broom and I, I'm not trying to torture my animals but I have to also protect my food. But I'm thinking next year inside here I want to grow all herbs and flowers and maybe some pumpkins because the vines can spread out. The pumpkins did so well in a deeper bed. So I don't know, I might add four beds instead of just two, but you know, one thing at a time here. I do still want to grow things that I can eat fresh on and I wanna try some new things. I wanna try patty pan squash. Um, maybe some kohlrabi, some things that I haven't grown routinely that preserve well that I don't have on my shelf. And of course, I'll be doing an inventory closer to spring. So I'm going to just put these in a bowl. I'll be right back, guys. I'm just bending down, trying not to fall again. <laughs> for those of you who are on the live, I want to thank you for your concern. The only thing I hurt was my pride. Um, and the funniest part is I have a doctor's appointment on Friday, just a routine. I, I go every three months because of my lupus. And um, B 
being on Medicare, they do a Medicare questionnaire, and the first thing they always ask me is, have you fallen in the last six months? And I'll be like, yes, how many times? I might have lost count. <laughs> but thankfully, I've been unharmed. So I'm gonna pop over here to the more colorful sunflowers. I'm not going to move while I'm filming <laughs> so I don't fall down. And we're gonna harvest some more see if any other sunflowers are ready to go in again you know if I'm looking at this I'm not picking this one for my prime specimen I'm gonna pick this one or perhaps this one so the bigger the head um, and this one has fully developed seeds in it if you can see can you see that instead of this the little fluffy ones the bigger the head it does do best, in my opinion, if you let it dry out on the vine. I don't think I have any more ready, but I'm going to pick some, and then we're going to talk about some other things that I'll be seed saving before we go in the house. And I'm going to share with you how to save tomato seeds the most successful way. Now, in truth, my son does this for me normally, but I need to start doing it for myself. All right, stay tuned. Now, I hope you all will enjoy ignore the state of certain things in the garden because until it's done I have made this bed <laughs> kind of a compost bed but I want to show you here can you see this is one of my loofah y'all this has gone crazy it is up over the top of the trellis I have eight I have one prime specimen that's over a foot long maybe a foot and a half long so whenever you save seeds from anything, you always want to use your prime specimen. So the best flower, the biggest pepper, the fattest jalapeno, whatever the case may be. The other thing that I still have in the garden, so let me finish talking about this. So how am I gonna seed save on this? Well, you can eat luffa or lufa, um, but you have to eat it when it's very young and tender and there's, there's a couple young ones, but it's, it's hard for me to show you. I have no intention of eating it. I want all the sponges. <laughs> so in order to harvest the sponge, you actually let it turn brown on the vine. Now this is only August 30th, so it's gonna be a little bit. Um, it may be closer to first frost, which is gonna be around mid-October. So we have probably 45 days but as these turn brown and shrivel up, I will be harvesting not only the loofah sponge, but the seeds from it because I love this and I want to grow them next year. And I fully intend to use the sponge. Now, one thing that wasn't so successful, y'all, but live and learn, right? You got to have successes and failures. Let me see if I can tip you down. All right. So I actually have three Kajari melon and you'll notice they're in little baskets. Those are just, they're actually pumpkin baskets is what I bought them for, you know, to keep a pumpkin up off the ground so that it doesn't rot and it's less prone to pest pressure. That is so hard to say. So if you look at the far one, you might notice it has a little bit of an orangish or yellow hue. They do call Kajari Melon, melon drop melons because they will drop off the vine when they're done. These ones are close. I dropped you right on your head. Are you all right? <laughs> so I'm not going to try to adjust the ring light. It's kind of breezy out here. So when I harvest those melons to eat them, I will be taking seeds. They're all pretty much the same size, so I will be seed saving from there. I also planted some late season sunflowers that have gotten... You know, I'm going to have to hold the ring light because it got all of a sudden breezy. But as you can see, they're much taller than me. These are mammoth sunflower seeds that I have saved. These are great specimens. The stalk is about this thick. I do have braces for them if uh, this one continues or they continue to get taller to keep them upright. But these stalks have developed beautifully. So they seem to be very happy here and deeper rooted than the ones in the middle. One disadvantage of the smaller bed. All right, guys, before we blow over, I'm gonna brace up my sunflowers. We're gonna head inside. I've harvested a few things and we're gonna get to seed saving tomatoes. I hope you'll stay tuned. Yeah, I apologize for the poor photography. <laughs> so let's swing around here 
And let me show you some of the things. It's in my new intro. Y'all, this is my pumpkin harvest for this year. Now you'll notice there are three greens. Again, I had horrible squash borer. And once you see a pumpkin is being attacked, it will ripen fully off of the vine. These are not um, necessarily pumpkins I'm going to eat. Some of the sunflowers that I harvested already, you can see this one's fully filled out with seed. And so I've just kind of tucked them in and I'll be taking a look regularly at these pumpkins to make sure like this one looks like it is leaking. So we'll put that outside on the front porch. And I also harvested these today. Now, why am I just sticking them here to dry? Well, you want all of the moisture out, otherwise your seeds will mold. So I will get some pretty good seeds. So I just kind of tuck them in among the pumpkins. The other thing I have here is the butternut squash that I've harvested, and that will be something that I will also seed save from my, oh no, uh, best one. That has a boo boo on it. So this will need to be eaten. So this may be my best one. But this is my first year growing butternut squash. I got some big ones. I got some weeny ones. But you know what? They'll all eat. And if they don't taste good, the chickens will love them. So this is part of my seed saving. It will go on until things are dried out. Now I will be saving pumpkin seeds, but they will be um, put out to decorate for spooky season coming up. And, you know, here I have some of my garlic that I've saved, but I will use fresh garlic for planting because that will be all gone very quickly because I do like my garlic. All right, y'all, let's get to saving some tomato seeds. What do you say? All right, y'all. So one of the things you may notice that's a little bit different than my normal, um, I'm always going to try to have good lighting for any of my videos, but I want to tell you all, my little off-grid experiment has really made me aware of how wasteful I am. This is not on you guys, with power. So I did a little home search and I just went through because of phantom power or um, particularly anything that has a remote, if it's plugged in, it does use a small amount of power. So I unplugged everything that was logical in the house. And I also have a lot of power strips that I can just flip off and on that, it, that I think it's going to make a difference in my electricity. So stay tuned for that. The other thing before we get into the tomatoes, y'all, uh, Friday starts and, and you're going to be watching this after it's already September 1, but my pantry challenge. So I've been kind of debating back and forth. What do I want to do? If anything, shopping wise, um, as I normally would to be prepared for the pantry challenge. And really guys, I am thinking I might get a gallon of milk so I can make yogurt and sour cream from it. But other than that, I really don't know that I need a whole lot of anything. So I really want to make an effort. And one of my goals is to utilize from my canned pantry every single day. You know, if I'm having leftovers, sometimes that doesn't make sense. But as I've done an inventory, I have a lot of food that I want to work through. That's why it's there. You know, it's great to have a stockpile, but I'm trusting that as I use this down, I will be growing more next year. All right, on to tomato seed or on to seed sitting. So a lot of times what I do is once they're good and dry, here's some mixed azenias that I've already seed saved and I only have one more. And it's not super dry, so I'm just gonna leave the envelope open. And then I have some orange azenias. And guys, don't laugh, I bought these at, not my aunt's, but at an estate sale. <laughs> And they were so cheap. 
So I'm just gonna stick them in there. So you do want to let them dry out and you also should label them. So um, I will be doing that as well. I did pick a couple jalapenos. I would not call these my prime specimens. So let me tell you why I'm not gonna seed save from these. I have so many seeds that I need to use up and these not being the prime specimen, these are not the ones I'm gonna save. And I would do the same with this bell pepper, I would seed save. I will tell you guys, I was not happy with the variety I planted, so I'm not going to seed save, I'm gonna eat this. <laughs> All right, so seed saving tomatoes. This is the way that my son does it for me. And thank you, Benny. Um, he will get exotic type tomatoes and save them. So you always want, again, to save your prime specimen, but you also want to make sure that you're not saving something that has been refrigerated. Now, one thing to know when you're seed saving a tomato, you are going to probably waste most of the tomato. And I'm just grabbing a, a funnel here because I can already see what's gonna go down. So this has deteriorated a little bit right here, um, but this is one of my prime specimen tomatoes. This is probably close to a two pounder. So I'm going to link an article that I think is great. I'm gonna put this in my garden book in case I am confused, I wanna to go to do it again since I'm normally enabled by my child. <laughs> and this comes from the spruce Dot com. <coughs> Pardon me, y'all. <coughs> Guys, I do have some fall allergies. <coughs> <coughs> I am so sorry. <clears throat> and the pollen count's really high today. So I apologize. <clears throat> Where's my sippy cup? Hold on, guys. <coughs> Guys, I so apologize. I <clears throat> don't know what that was all about. So I printed off these directions and of course, first thing you wanna do is you wanna pick your prime specimen and we're gonna harvest the seeds. So it says to start the process, slice the fruit in half, but slice it not this way, you wanna slice it this way. So you've got the stem end and the bottom end. That makes it a little easier to harvest seeds. So let's do that. So as you see, this one is really full of seeds. Um, in like a paste tomato, the seeds are usually concentrated like in the cavity, so it's a little easier. Slicing tomatoes, you end up scooping out flesh with seed. So into a jar, into a very clean canning jar, I'm gonna start scooping out these little pockets, and I'll show you here in just a minute what I mean by that, where the seeds are. So here's a little pocket. Let me do another one so you can see a little better. There you go. So you see the two holes here. So I'm just gonna continue to do that. And I'm actually going to do both halves. Now, is what left eatable, edible? Yes, it is. And my girls will enjoy it. Because <laughs> I'm going to give it to them. They love tomatoes. So let's do this half. And then I'm going to talk a little bit about what the next steps are. And again, guys, I will link this article because I thought it was excellent. Thankfully, I mean, I guess it depends on how you look at it, but I'm glad that my tomatoes are sort of coming to an end. Um, I'm kind of down to more eating than I am anything else. Uh, not a whole bunch for preserving. I do have a little selection over here. So step number two. You want your seeds floating in the liquid. 
now or in the juice and the pulp and such. If they are not, you can add up to a cup of water and then we're gonna let them ferment. So what it says, set it in a warm out of the way spot, allow two to day, four days for fermentation to take place. As it does so, the mixture is going to begin to smell awful. So store it where you won't pass by frequently. Uh, if you have sterilized canning jars, they make a good container for fermenting tomato seeds. The extra space at the top of the jar controls some of the odor and the clear sides let you keep tabs on what's happening. Cover the top with cheesecloth or paper towel, which will help keep flies and such out. So I am going to put a little bit of water in mine. Because I do want them floating. I am going to take a paper towel. I'm going to put it over the top. And guys, if I have a rubber band, don't laugh at my rubber band collection here. Hey, it works. Oops. Now, this is a beefsteak tomato. So, I probably should have written on this before I... Let's see if maybe I have a magic here. So, yeah, I should have done this before I lit it. <laughs> so funny enough, I'm going to put BS for beef sick. <laughs> and I'm going to put them into my pantry right here. And I'm going to do the same with my other tomatoes. So let me do that since you've kind of got the gist of it. Then we'll talk about what the steps are beyond that. And I'll probably bring it to you in a later video. We also today need to take a quick peek at our apple cordial. Um, I've been checking it on the daily. So I'm very uh, excited to show you what's happening in that jar. So I'll see you in a few. Oops. So I just have to show you the inside of one of my big boy or better boys. I think, I think it's a big boy. And what I've learned is you can squeeze them when they're nice and ripe. So there you have it. Now this one has a little bit more core in it, but it still has lots of lovely seeds. Boy, the chickens are gonna be eating well today. They absolutely love tomatoes, especially Violet. She will uh, come out of her broody <laughs> for some of us, for some tomato seeds. All right, let me finish this up and then I will tell you about next steps. All right, y'all. So we have our three jars of seeds. So now what? So I'm going to put them in the pantry. You wanna check them every single day and you will know they're ready in two to four days, just kind of depending on your temperature, etc., when mold will start to form on the top, you'll get some bubbles and the good seeds will settle to the bottom. Now at that point, you wanna go ahead and pull off the mold and you want to strain out your seeds. And then you can allow them uh, to dry very well. Um, think the way I've always done it is a paper plate and let me tell you guys they want to stick because they still have a little bit of slime attached to them so if you put them on a paper towel and on a you know a plate of some sort and in a nice place where there's air circulation they will dry out better don't forget once you do that put them in an envelope or something like that. Make sure you label them with the year and of course what kind of seeds they are. Um, don't try to dry it with heat because that will destroy the process. This works. That's why I've harvested and eaten probably 250 pounds of tomatoes from my garden. Um, an envelope is a really good place to store it. So from just a little bit of work here, we've got some zinnias, we've got some sunflowers drying, and we've got Amish paste, beef steak, and big boy, or better boy, I can't remember which they are, I think they're big boy, um, store or fermenting so that we can then harvest the seeds. 
So let's go take a look really quick at our apple brandy and then I will be back with some final thoughts. I hope you'll stay tuned. All right, I'm back in the deep dark corner of my pantry <laughs> is our apple cordial. So as you see, it's remained about an inch from the top. So I haven't had to add any more apples, but if you look down here, and I'm hoping that this captures it, you can see that the liquid is up to about right here. So it's doing its thing. I don't see any mold. I don't have any odor. Uh, it does seem to be airtight. So we're just gonna let this go and keep checking on it. The other thing I failed to do is I did not talk y'all in my off-grid experiment about my water supply. So these plastic jugs, which I will try to link below, hold seven gallons of water and it has very specific instructions that come with about how to save the water um, longer term and keep it, you know, safe and sanitary to drink. So I do have three of them. I just wanted to share. That. Thank you all for your time today. I hope this seed saving video has been really helpful. Don't forget to check the link in the description box for some extensive directions from the spruce. Now what I'm going to be getting ready to do is go out and I'm going to harvest some mint and lemon balm. I'm going to freeze dry that and it can be used in the winter for teas. So I hope you all are doing well on the pantry challenge. I'll be talking more about that in upcoming videos, but the next video y'all, hopefully you want a little sneak peek. Mm, see all that stuff. Yeah, that's all you can see. I'm getting ready for my fall craft video. So excited for it. I have a one, two, three, four different things that we're going to be doing. And this is very economical. These are supplies you can get at the Dollar Tree. So I think it'll be a lot of fun. So stay tuned for that. I know I've been promising it for a really long time, but guys, harvest has to take priority here. And I needed to get ready for a potential power outage by doing my off-grid experiment. I have followed up. I did get my new propane tank, $73, but hey, I've got it. My butane is here. I've ordered myself a kettle, uh, a cast iron kettle for outdoors. And guys, I've been cooking a lot outdoors since I did my experiment. I have also been being very economical with my power and my gas because it really opened my eyes to just how reliant I am on the grid. Still don't want to be off grid, just saying. All right, guys, I will see you a little bit later this week. If you do me a big favor, if you haven't already, smash that like button. Drop me that comment below. Was this helpful? Do you still have questions? Is there anything else I can help you with? And if you're seed saving and have tips, drop it below, guys. I never take your, I learn so much from you all and never take it as criticism. Plus other people can read your comments and if there's a really good one, a lot of times I will pin it up at the top so you don't have to scroll through all the comments. All right guys, until I see you again, be healthy, be well, be blessed and take care.